Good morning and welcome to Breakfast with Roger Johnson and Sally Nugent. Hello, good morning. Our headlines today. The Good morning, it's Monday the 31st of May. Our top story today, the coronavirus vaccination programme in England is being stepped up this week before ministers decide if restrictions can be eased further on June the 21st. Twickenham Rugby Stadium is opening as the country's largest vaccination centre. Matt Graving is the insurers. It's 19 minutes past six. Let's have a quick look at some of but. of beaches are in the newspapers today certainly busy on the coast yesterday. absolutely it's a nice beach Bournemouth isn't it uh, let's uh, have a look at some of the inside stories uh, this one have you heard of PCE it's yeah. academics have named it uh, at um, City University in London um, and they've they've done a study Phil Collins the Bee Gees all regarded now as as legends but, but they weren't exactly rubbish to start with no, were they exactly so don't you have to be really quite good and then maybe just fall out of favour a little that's bit exactly and come back. That's, that's fine. exactly what it is. Fine. Um, how do you fancy being a hologram? <laughs> what do you think? Okay, we, we could, could be replaced, you know, Roger. <laughs> well, it'll happen um, one day. There's no doubt TV about that. TV <laughs> stars and fans are going to appear as holograms at the BAFTAs this year on the red carpet. Because Those are the main stories this morning, just after half past six. Uh, we're going to talk about the great work that people have been doing to help get us through the pandemic, because from... Delivering vital medicine, stewarding COVID vaccination sites and making phone calls to the isolated. Volunteers have played a huge part during the pandemic. New figures show that nearly two million tasks were carried out by more than 430,000 people. We're joined now by two of them. At 6.43, after one of the wettest Mays on record, you don't need reminding, uh, the sun has finally made an appearance for the bank holiday weekend. Uh, and as we've been reporting, temperatures could reach 25 degrees today. Could be the hottest day of the year so far. Thousands of people have made their way to the seaside to make the most of it. Our reporter, Adam... <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, we're going to speak to Mick a little bit later on. He, he's setting off on his new adventure uh, a little bit later in the... Pro now... If you are not really looking forward to the return, that report from Frankie and the camera there this morning. It's uh, 27, no, 26 minutes past seven. Uh, let's get the news, travel and weather where you are. Provide you with a branded mug though. That's great, isn't it? They're collected. I didn't know we were allowed to take these out of the room. Only Normally, for special people, Roger. Into trouble. Uh, right, let's have a look at the sport. 7.36, uh, Gavin. Now, finally, after weeks and weeks of wet weather, the sun is here and people across the UK have been making the most of it. Yeah. Uh, it's just coming up to eight o'clock. Headlines are coming soon. Do stay with us. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Roger Johnson and Sally Nugent. Hello, good morning. Our headlines today. The Hundreds of Afghans who work for the British military and at its embassy in Kabul will be rapidly relocated, with many expected to be resettled in the UK. The decision comes amid fears for their safety as international troops prepare to leave the country and the security situation deteriorates. Our defence correspondent, Jonathan Beale, has more. A temporary ban on bailiff-enforced evictions introduced in England at the start of the coronavirus pandemic comes to an end today. Charities say 400,000 tenants have already received eviction notices or been told to expect them. As our business correspondent, Katie Austin, reports. Yeah. Five minutes for a gargle, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, half past eight now. Um, we're going to talk about stop and search. It's one of the most divisive powers probably used by the police. Some people claim it disproportionately targets minorities. Former footballer turned broadcaster Jermaine Genus has spent the past year investigating the issue for a new Channel 4 documentary. Let's take a look. 18 minutes to nine now. After one of the wettest Mays on record... The sun has finally made an appearance for the bank holiday weekend. Even if it's a bit cloudy where you are at the moment, it's going to go. The temperatures could reach 25 degrees today in some places. Thousands of people have uh, made their way to the seaside to make the most of it. Our reporter, Adam McLean, went. and we wish him well. Yeah, we'll follow him as he makes his way around the country. Yeah, as Roger said, it's just coming up to nine o'clock and a group of families are trying to stop an East London cemetery from building extra plots on top of their relatives' graves. Cemeteries are allowed to remound graves after 75 years, but families, including those who lost, lost loved ones in the Bethnal Green tube disaster, say that those laws are now out of date. 
Frankie McCamley reports. In front of audiences next month when she heads out on her solo theatre tour. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with social distancing, actually. She's starring in the Andrew Lloyd Webber and Don Black production, a one-woman musical, Tell Me on a Sunday. Let's take a look at her in action. This uh, new show opens at the Malvern Festival Theatre on June the 15th and then obviously other dates around the country after that. It is uh, 13 minutes past nine. That is it from us this morning. Time now for Morning Live with Gethin and Kim.